Hello. Um, today we will start the new chapter, chapter number two. Uh, the title is Economic Problems, Scarcity and Choice. So it's an extension to chapter one, actually. Uh, there are two learning objectives. If you remember, we explained in the first chapter uh, several uh, concepts in economics. For example, let me list it here. We explained these things. Um, scarcity. We explained due to a scarcity people are making choice and maybe we didn't name it in the first chapter but the choice has a nature of trade-off and i'm gonna show it in this chapter so all together is bringing us a notion of opportunity Cost, which we explained it in brief but in this chapter we are going to further elaborate it and we also explains the notion of marginalism things are relative so marginalism is that incremental uh, choices at the last unit people are making so it can be also said relativity so if we are basically uh, at every moment we think that how much additional uh, production or additional consumption or additional benefit or additional marginal cost uh, or opportunity cost is is causing so that is uh, briefly explained in the chapter one and also the notion of efficiency which brings about inefficiency also inefficiency uh, so all these uh, concepts, we are going to revisit it in a very succinct way and we do it with the help of production possibility frontier. So it's an amazing uh, tool, analytical tool, if you wish. I call it analytical tool. It's a model which helps us to understand all of them visually. So visualization by visualization. It means we are using the Cartesian axis X, Y. Okay, with X, Y, think with a graph, with a graph, we are explaining all of these concepts. Uh, so it's a all-in-one. All-in-one model. Um, so we didn't want to basically bother ourselves in the chapter one. So we are taking it into this chapter to cover, uh, to develop our production possibility frontier. So uh, explaining um, um, what are the most fundamental questions in every economy. Uh, every every science have some fundamental questions to answer. Okay, so like in philosophy, we are thinking of where we have come from, what for, and where we are heading. 
So three fundamental questions of the philosophy or the science in general. Um, but every sub-branch of the uh, science is uh, answering a specific type of the uh, fundamental questions. Like uh, if, I, if I want to classify the science tree, the science, the general science, is classified into two types. One is called natural science. Here the behavior of humans are not. Human is a part of the nature. So uh, we can, we can uh, list a couple of them, um, like physics. Physics also we can have quantum physics. Uh, so for the atoms, physics of atoms, and uh, a standard model of the particles, uh, and uh, the physics of uh, uh, the universe. So this is the microphysics, this is the macrophysics, or the, the universe. So here we have uh, quantum physics. Here we have the general, general relativity theory of Albert Einstein. And then you may have chemistry. So we are, we are not talking about the behavior of human. We are talking about how atoms form the for mo molecules and how molecules form different substance and what are the uh, fundamental elements like periodic table or Mendeleev table and the characteristics of each molecules and atoms and so and so. Okay. And we can say that there are two types. Again, the organic chemistry and uh, mineral chemistry. You remember this from high school. The organic chemistries are the one which is focusing on uh, key elements like carbon, hydrogen, and um, only, only certain uh, uh, elements which exist in organic or in organism in a live being, in trees, in animals, the um, oil, hydrocarbons, those things are the deads of the bodies, deads of the trees, things like that. So the carbon are the in the center point of analysis in organic, whereas the minerals are everything else, like iron, gold, silver. It's been analyzed in uh, mineral chemistry and then we have biology you name it um, in these others uh, uh, part of the science we call it human science here we are focusing human science sometimes we call it social science also and here two main um, branch is sociology and economics. And then we can say the others, such as politics, law, uh, by the way, law, law is not uh, a science, it's basically jurisdictional, but it is related to the politics. Um, psychology, etc., etc. But with sociology, choice doesn't, choice is not an issue. It's quite opposite. 
It's how the choices are made for individuals. So they are talking about the formation or evolution of the culture. Uh, the evolution of traditions. And uh, social norms. So here we are not saying that what people are choosing. Like if you look at the Arabic culture, the, the dress code for women and the men are quite different from the, the way that uh, the Western culture uh, is, is wearing. And these are basically the mental model at social level is made for us. And we are not making any questions. We are basically obeying. So the choice is not. It's actually obedience. We are obeying that choices, which is uh, provided readily to us. Whereas economics is quite opposite. E economics, economics is centered on a uh, choice to be made. And this choice is related to that scarcity. So in economics, which is our focus, um, the, the choice is in the center of the definition as we did define it in the uh, previous, uh, previous uh, uh, chapter. Okay, so again, we are basically um, explaining what are the fundamental questions. Actually, in economics, for making these choices, we are saying that there are three fundamentals. Fundamental questions to be answered. And this number one is what question. I just write what. And uh, number two is how question. And number three is for whom. So we are going to talk about this. And as a result, we again go back to the notion of scarcity and choice. And then we are coming and explaining that uh, we want to we want to develop something to visualize and then we invent something called production possibility frontier so far i'm, I'm only bringing you are warming up to bring you into the uh learning objective so by end the end of this uh, sessions you would be answering all these things or you would be able to understand all these at once and then this, the second learning objective is that, uh, okay, now we know that these, there are these questions, there is choices to be made, but uh, what are the economic systems? What are different economic systems to answer these questions? We are saying in one extreme, we have... And the role of the government, role of the governments. So in one extreme, we have that the role of governments are minimal. It's called free market. Uh, system. And then on the other extreme, we have that government is deciding all these questions and this is called command and control. Command and control. Okay, so we have one system called market economy or free market economy or competitive market economy, something like that. And uh, there are societies which are combination of both. We call it mix economy. Sometimes economies are leaning towards this more. Like United States is, 
is claiming that it is more lean toward free market. And some countries like Cuba or uh, North Korea or uh, China is uh, saying that they are more leaned towards uh, command and control or planning economy. Former Soviet Union, for example. So uh, what would be um, these questions, these sets of questions may be answered of course, in every society, they are going to be answered in one way or another, but um, we have different systems. So the second learning objective is that understand the central difference in ways of command economies versus market economies. So these are the learning objectives of us and... Uh, uh, if you wish, I will stop it here and then I will start the first learning objective and then followed by the second learning objective. Thank you.